Hi, Michelle. So, gra uh, so glad that you're here to join us for the Bloomberg Year Ahead. So I, in a very work from home way, am having internet issues. So please bear with me. If you can't hear a question, I can definitely repeat it. So just starting off, I want to acknowledge that we're almost hitting that one year mark of uh, the coronavirus pandemic shutting down cold stores and more generally upending retail. So what's one thing that you and your executive team uh, accomplished this year that might have taken years if not for the pandemic? Well, Jordan, it's great to be here. And uh, that's a big question. It's hard to just choose one. But as I think about 2020, you know, we're going to look back at this time as it being one of the most pivotal years for the company. Uh, we've faced extraordinary challenges, like closing our stores for seven weeks and up to 17 weeks in some cases. Uh, we navigated uh, financial liquidity, came out the other side really well, ended third quarter with $2 billion of cash on the balance sheet and full access to our credit line, so very proud of that. And then above all else, putting the health and safety of our associates first. So I just think from a cultural standpoint, the problem solving, the agility, the resilience, phenomenal. And those cultural characteristics will carry us forward. And then from a business standpoint, well, I mean, first and foremost, and I think every retailer and most businesses can point to the power of omnichannel and how that has dramatically accelerated this year. And I'm a big believer in stores. I'm sure we're going to talk about that. I think they're going to be critical for the industry and for Kohl's in particular going forward. But I think customers becoming a lot more comfortable and having that one of the tools of how they shop retail like us has been really powerful. And then the last thing I'd say, Jordan, is we use this time to tighten and focus our strategy. And we shared that in October. And I believe that also is going to be transformational for the company going forward. Yeah, and let's pick up on the strategy part that you laid out in October for investors that gave a little bit more insight on what you want to do with the retailer moving forward. And a big part of that was that active and casual lifestyle. So explain to me, why, why do you think um, Kohl's can gain traction in that category, especially as it becomes more competitive? Yeah, so what I would say, Jordan, to that is, Kohl's has always been known as a great casual destination serving the families across multiple need states. But one of the things we recognized during the pandemic, frankly, coming into the pandemic and accelerating during the pandemic to your earlier question, is how customers are leading a more active lifestyle. And that is going to continue. And our active business has had tremendous momentum. We've more than doubled that business over the last five, six years. We've now set our sights for active to be 30% or more, so a third of our business. Think about the impact that will have in the store. And the active and casual lifestyle extends really across the entire business. It, it goes into home, living an active lifestyle through healthy sleep or healthy cooking. It extends into beauty. I'm sure we'll talk about that. We've had our sights set on beauty to serve the everyday needs of the family for some time. And clearly, we just made a big announcement with Sephora. So to me, I think about you know two things that really align to set us up well. One is, as I was saying, the consumer's going there. We know a lot about where they're headed. We're going to be right there and ahead of them. And secondly, these are businesses where we have momentum. So you bring those together and the power of our omni-channel, the power of our brand portfolio, our value equation, that, that positions us really well, especially in light of all the industry disruption that's happening right now. Right. And beauty, yes. Let, let us move to beauty. And the Sephora deal that was announced uh, last month in December. So based off of that deal and the amount of stores that we'll start to see Sephora um, show up in Kohl's, it seems like Kohl's is very optimistic um, about the makeup sector and even at a time when we're wearing masks and social distancing. So why do you see beauty and as an extension wellness um, as, a, as a place where Kohl's can be profitable in? Yeah, great, great question. As I just said a moment ago, we've had our sights set on beauty for quite some time. We've made some some investments over the last few years, and on a, I'll call it relatively small base, our business has grown more than 40%. We know our customers want beauty. 70% of our customer base are, are women. And so uh, for us, the opportunity was 
hey, who's the right partner? What's the right way to deliver an outstanding beauty experience? And um, could not be more excited about our partnership with Sephora. I mean, it's really a perfect match. It's bringing our omni-channel capabilities, our expansive and profitable store base, 1,160 stores, our omni-channel digital capabilities with Sephora, who is the expert in beauty. So what they have is the access to this incredible platform and 65 million customers. It's worth mentioning that the overlap between Sephora stores and Kohl's stores is very is very little. So there's a lot of incrementality. We're all small, we're convenient. That is very important to them as they build out their strategy. And then for us, like I said, we're partnering with the world's leading beauty expert. They attract a younger customer. I'm very confident this is gonna bring a new and younger customer into Kohl's. And to your point, you mentioned kind of the short-term pandemic pandemic impacts. This is a long-term investment for us. It's right in the kind of squarely part of our strategy around the active and casual lifestyle. We're gonna be building out more than 800 shops over the next three years. We're gonna turn on everything beauty digitally being Sephora this fall. Mm -hmm. So it's a very big long-term bet. And the last thing I'd say is as we bring in these new customers, we're really excited to introduce them to the rest of the Kohl's experience. So we think there's going to be a big halo impact to this as well. So how are you all thinking about that digital in integration when it comes to Sephora, which is known for um, digital and its app and whatnot? How are you guys thinking about that when it comes to makeup? Well, I'd say our teams are hard at work right now to have a really seamless integration between you know, our deep capabilities and very popular Kohl's app and all of our digital assets and marrying everything they know about their customer and their digital delivery of their experience. Uh, one thing worth mentioning is that as customers come and buy Sephora online or in our stores, they are going to be part of the Sephora loyalty program. So that mm -hmm. experience is going to be seamless and they're again quite quite expert in that regard so when a customer comes into I'll just pick on the stores for a moment again the same would be in the digital experience it's like they're in a real Sephora store it is a real Sephora store 2,500 square feet the beauty advisors who will be there and and whether it's skincare or cosmetics um, that is often an assisted purchase. And so our, while there'll be Kohl's associates, they're gonna get the full training of what the Sephora associates get. So like I said, it's gonna be a, a big step forward for us in beauty, but more importantly, it's gonna evolve the entire Kohl's experience. Got it. And I wanna move to diversity and inclusion right now. Um, earlier this year, Kohl's laid out uh, its DNI goals. And as part of it, it was, I believe, doubling spend on diverse suppliers. So as part of that, we've seen some other um, retailers come out with similar goals. But as you take a step back and think about diversity in Kohl's, is that uh, enough in serving black and brown shoppers or is there more to be done? Yeah, so um, I will say we have an extensive and very comprehensive plan on diversity and inclusion. Serving a diverse and inclusive environment, whether it's our people or customers, again, has been part of the value system for Kohl's for many, many years. Um, I myself, since I've been CEO, have been accelerating that focus. And then even this last year, we said it's not enough. And I think it was a real call to action for all leaders, companies, and organizations to make bigger progress faster. And so we too are part of that. I mean, we can be part of the solution. We employ 85,000 associates. We touched 65 million customers. And so we elevated our objectives. Our, our framework actually is around what we can do with our people, what we can do for customers, and then what we can do for our communities. So the, um, the particular uh, example you just cited is really around where an employer and a retailer like us who has scale, how can we make a big difference? And we can make a big difference in the supply chain. So yes, we have communicated, we want to more than double our purchases from, from diverse suppliers, but that's not the only one. We have multiple KPIs or, or performance indicators across each of these areas to make sure that we are accountable and I as a CEO am accountable to drive progress. And what have um, you all seen or found when it comes to like laying out your diversity goals? Like why focus on some of the categories that you did just based off of the data when it comes to black and brown shoppers for Kohl's? 
So, well, first of all, to me, it starts with our people and the culture of the company. And while we've been doing these things, we've really increased our level of communication, of transparency. We have employee resource groups that represent all these populations across multiple facets. Um, we're getting more and more participation and really celebrating all, all types of diversity across our company. Again, we, we serve America, we serve 65 million plus customers, we have lots of associates, and so it's important that our associate base mirrors our customer base and that we're gonna do more to make sure that we can be relevant to customers. If I just you know use customers for an example, it's the types of products we sell, the designs, that type of thing, and there are multiple efforts afoot for us to raise the bar. We're not there yet, but, we, but we're making good progress. Here. Um, and I cannot let a conversation go by without asking you about Amazon, one of your most high profile partnerships uh, that Kohl's has had during your tenure. And so you guys have been fostering this relationship for a few years now at this point. What have been um, the biggest lessons or takeaways that you've had um, by having Amazon as part of your stores? You know, to me, um, the Amazon lesson, and frankly, it applies to our active partners or to our recently announced Sephora partnership is really about the power of partnerships. It's looking for companies that can come together, who can innovate, who have complementary strengths and do big things together. And um, Amazon was a very high profile example, but we have many examples across our entire company. And um, it's been a win for, it's been a win for both of us. You know, for, for, again, similar to the example I was using for Sephora, what we brought is this powerful omni-channel platform, all of these stores, 1,160 stores across the country. Um, what they bring is an expansive, dedicated customer base. And so the win for them is easy returns. And for those who maybe are listening and not too familiar with our program, it's very simple. We make it free, easy. Customer doesn't even need to package it up. And we know from customers that's a pain point. So we're giving this phenomenal experience and we get new customers, more traffic, and even a younger customer, Jordan. So I think for the program itself, we feel very good about it. It's financially accretive to the company. And I think there's lots of great learnings about how two companies can leverage each other's strengths. And with a lot of the partnerships that you noted, um, it is about this younger customer um, might be more interesting going to Kohl's. In the past years that you've um, been in charge of Kohl's, has, that, has your customer demographic age shift it downwards? You know, I tell you is we're making really good progress, Jordan, on attracting that younger customer. So if we take active and brands like Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour, they're very popular with that younger segment. So that's been a big focus for us. I just mentioned Amazon. And then, of course, Sephora is going to be, I think, a breakthrough as it relates to attracting a younger customer. You know, we, we do serve a wide demographic. And so we also want to make sure that as we attract this younger customer, we're also protecting the core of who we serve today. So it's a delicate balance, um, but I feel very confident that through all of our programs that we are really going to meet the needs to this broad, diverse customer base. Yeah. Um, and then going back to Amazon uh, real quickly. So are just given the lessons for the past few years, are there plans to expand that program in new ways in the year ahead? You know, we're always testing. So at Kohl's, we have, you know, dozens of tests and uh, different experiments going on across all of our stores and digitally all the time. And even with Amazon, you know, we are, and it was just recently announced that we are experimenting in one of our stores with one of our initiatives called Right Sizing, which is where we have a store that maybe no longer needs to be as big as it is to serve that community. Um, so we shrink the store and it becomes a smaller version of a Kohl's. And we do have, so if it's a 90,000 square foot store, it becomes say a 50,000 square foot store. And then we can have another retailer next spot, next door. And we've done a handful of those with um, organizations, companies like Planet Fitness. So we are gonna be experimenting with an Amazon grocery next door. So that's, that's just one example. Um, I can't tell you if it's gonna work or not, but we have a very innovative culture. Amazon has a very innovative culture. And we're having lots of discussions about other possibilities as well. Let's see. And so we are one week into the Biden administration. But do you see at this point anything tangible yet that the Biden administration um, could do that would impact the retail sector and thus Kohl's? 
Yeah, well, I mean, we're clearly in the very early days of the administration. Um, what I'd say is, as a company, we've been around for more than 50 years. We've had lots of transitions in administrations, and we're always prepared for whatever the next move might be. I mean, for Kohl's, we, we always advocate for what's in the best interest of our consumer, what's in the best interest of our people. We have deep relationships with our industry advocates like RELA and NRF. So whatever the issue that might surface, um, we'll be educated and we'll be ready. Yeah. And so then in the, like looking ahead to 2021, which we're here for, uh, for this <laughs> conference, what do you have on your radar apart from the health and safety and the vaccine and the coronavirus? Um, what do you have on your radar for just colds and what's gonna be a big uh, challenge ahead? Well, what I would say, Jordan, is we're still operating in an uncertain environment. So, mm -hmm. so there's, you know, there is a lot going on. You just mentioned the change in administration. Um, could not be happier about the vaccine rollout and looking forward to the day where that is widely available so that there's normalcy returning. You know, I feel like Kohl's is incredibly well positioned. I mean, there's been a ton of industry disruption, and I'm, you know, I'm never happy to see other companies sort of not make it through this time. But the practical reality is that customers are going to want to shop, and market share is there to be had. And so, with the momentum that we're gaining, with these big partnerships that we have, like with Amazon and Sephora, um, with our new strategy to be the destination for the active and casual lifestyle, I feel like we're focused, we're compelling, and we're really set up to grow our business um, over the long term. I think also for Kohl's, there's an opportunity to not only drive growth, but drive it in a quality way. We also have a lot of opportunities and initiatives around how to drive more profitable growth. So operational excellence, margins, expense control. And I'm, I'm very confident we'll, we'll do both. And I know you're a believer in the stores. So in 2021, what kind of relationship do you think customers will have with stores because it dramatically changed last year because of the pandemic? Yes. Well, I'd say even today, you know, we're in a pandemic, but I visit lots of stores all the time and there are customers in our stores and um, they're happy to they're happy to be there with, like I said, at least some normalcy, even even today. Um, our stores are incredibly safe. We've gotten a lot of great accolades from third parties. Um, associates feel very pleased. And as we look forward, um, I do think in some ways with the power of how digital has come on that at times stores might be underrepresented in, in their importance of what that's gonna look like. Because I do think customers are gonna be anxious to get out. And so when exactly that happens, again, I think we're dependent a little bit on the vaccine and, and other factors, but um, you know, I think about Kohl's, the convenience we offer being off mall, the omni-channel capability. So maybe they want to come to a store, but it's a buy online pickup in store. It's a curbside pickup. There's just all those behaviors to me are going to stick. And because we have such a healthy store portfolio, we're going to continue to innovate. So we've talked about partnerships. We've talked about Active, Amazon, now Sephora. What next? And I will tell you, there's lots of conversations happening inside Kohl's these days on what are those next evolutions going to be. Um, but for us, I think it's just a real opportunity to continue to elevate the shopping experience, make it more convenient, and really be a destination where, where customers want to come and experiment, discover, whatever the next find will be. So I, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a really great chapter for retail as we emerge out of this pandemic. And do you see some of those new capabilities such as the curbside or um, some of those other digital capabilities staying around? It's not just as part of the, the 2020 disruption that we saw? No question. I am 100% confident that, that these capabilities will stick. It's offering choice and convenience to the consumer. So it's however they want to shop, whenever they want to shop. And um, you know something like a curbside, they can order something online and they can have it within hours and they don't even have to get out of their car. So think about that convenience. It's sort of like what happened with drive throughs in the fast food industry many years ago. Now you can buy, you know, your next jacket that way. So, so I think, um, you know, well beyond safety, this is offering just a great convenience and service to customers. So the investments we make, and we've been making Jordan investments the last few years, and that's why we were able to turn on and amplify 
all these capabilities and introduce new ones like curbside. And we're gonna continue to innovate. So again, um, it's gonna be an exciting time at Kohl's and in retail.